shots fired. A nightclub performance ends with a police officer shot. Now the hunt for who's behind it. It's going to be another mild evening and overnight and timing some showers. Want to take in some stunning new art installations this season without spending a dime? Well, New York Live's got where in New Jersey you can have a free day of outdoor fun. Hey, this is News for Now for December 16th. I'm your girl, Kay Ingram. Now, an off-duty NYPD lieutenant is rushed to the hospital after the NYPD says he was shot several times. That's after a confrontation with armed robbers. One of the suspects was killed. Police say they cornered him as he left a nightclub in Queens. News 4's Romney Smith has the details from Woodside. Partygoers at Club La Boom were enjoying a performance by Puerto Rican rapper Mike Towers when the night came to an abrupt end. The artists got rushed off stage. Um, they turned the music down, and then that was about it. So we're like, you know what's going on? And then they told us we had to go. Like, they ended the party, and we just left. And then they said that we couldn't walk that way because supposedly there was a shooting. Police swarmed Northern Boulevard at 57th Street in Woodside, Queens. They say multiple men followed the off-duty lieutenant outside of the club. I believe the two guys were trying to rob him, and that did not work. A shootout ensued, and Andrew Eagle helped the officer who was hit multiple times. Police recovered this semi-automatic gun with an extended magazine and are still searching for the two to three other men involved. Meanwhile, across the Hudson River in Newark, a police officer there is recovering at home after being shot Tuesday night. Officer Nicholas Etter was wheeled out of University Hospital Wednesday afternoon. The 23-year-old was shot around 8.30 Tuesday night at 14th Avenue and 14th Street in Newark. The suspected shooter is in custody and facing multiple charges. Etter is expected to make a full recovery. We're also getting an inside look at a mining accident in Dutchess County. An employee is recovering after he got trapped 2,500 feet into a tunnel. It happened around 1.30 Tuesday afternoon at the Wingdale Materials Quarry in Dover. Crews say a man was inside a mining machine pinned under a 40-ton boulder. It took over an hour to get him out. He was airlifted to a hospital, but he should be okay. The company he works for says he had injuries to his hand and both of his legs. No word on how this happened. Hi there, I'm Storm Team 4 meteorologist Maria La Rosa. Boy, what a mild day it was. Sun and clouds, temperatures climbing into the 60s in places. We're hanging on to that mild weather through the overnight. In fact, by this evening, still in the upper 50s, and that's where we're going to end up by tomorrow morning. The low to mid 50s, well above average, and maybe another record breaking day tomorrow. Now, as far as the clouds go, there may be a few spotty showers with that as well into the overnight, but the trend will be to see those clearing skies and some of that sunshine for tomorrow afternoon. Another sort of spring feel kind of day. Down to about 52 in the morning at the city and Central Park. Newark at 53, down to 51 in Bridgeport, starting off in the 40s north and west. Temperatures do drop, but not until later in the afternoon behind that next cold front. Hey, you want to take in some culture for free? Well, New York Live heads to Jersey City to scope out three outdoor spots featuring some really fun art installations you can check out too. For the first time, we are bringing our free art tour across the river to New Jersey, and our first stop is one that you could actually see from Lower Manhattan. It's called Water Soul, and it's a new permanent fixture here on Newport Pier in Jersey City. Created by Spanish artist Jama Plenza, the sculpture resembles a woman with her eyes closed, shushing pedestrians walking around her. It stands 80 feet high and it's the artist's tallest creation yet. He said Water Soul is asking us for a little bit of silence. It is asking us to listen to its profound voice that speaks to us about the origin of the world and its memory. He also says his wish is that Water Soul becomes an icon for Newport and a landmark that visually connects it with New York City. We can't talk about art in Jersey City without featuring one of their many murals. This one is called Together by Jason Naylor. Jason said the idea behind the mural is when we put our hands together, everything is possible. There is no limit what we can do when we join hands. It just requires that we work together. This mural premiered during the Jersey City Mural Fest last June. 
There are over 100 murals throughout Jersey City. You can find this mural on Monmouth Street right near the corner of 13th. And finally, if you've seen fence art in Jersey City, it's probably the work of Norman Kirby. Norman wanted to make several beautiful pieces of art to be displayed outside in the open. He wanted to create something on a public domain that wouldn't damage or deface the property and could be taken down if needed. The fence art installations are constructed with eco-friendly materials. The recycled fabric is dyed to the desired color and reused to create something that positively impacts the community. In 2018, Norman was acknowledged for his installations and actually received an award for public art from the Jersey City Arts Council. This particular installation is located on the fences around the historic Hudson and Manhattan Railroad powerhouse. So there you have it, three ways to see free art in Jersey City. There is no better gift than the gift of life for the holidays. One COVID survivor returned to the hospital to thank the guardian angels who saved her life. And she brought along a little surprise straight from the North Pole. Here's News 4's Pat Battle. Okay, so she came through the door, not down the chimney, but for these healthcare workers at Holy Name in Teaneck, this mid-morning visit from Mrs. Claus. Merry Christmas. Was just what the doctor ordered. You see, a year ago, Mrs. Claus and her husband were both patients here fighting COVID-19. I had uh, double pneumonia in both lungs. Um, you know, my organs started shutting down. Everything else was shut down too. the Broadway stage where Mrs. Claus spends her time when she's away from the North Pole here in a production of 42nd Street. Visits with Santa mostly virtual, but these folks, they never stopped. I can't begin to tell you what it feels like to be here today, standing here, breathing, alive, and being able to share joy. And it's all thanks to you. It was enough to bring Nurse Marilyn to tears. Because it's just so great to see that you're doing well. <laughs> Last time you saw me, I didn't look like this. And she wouldn't be Mrs. Claus if she didn't come bearing gifts. Little angel ornaments for the people she calls angels on earth. It gives us a lot of pride and reminds us uh, this is the reason why we do it, is to give people a chance to come back to their normal lives. Did you know you were treating a VIP, that it was Mrs. Claus? I sure didn't. <laughs> Now that you know, I would have been nicer. Not possible, says the lady in red, who vaguely recalls a certain nurse jumping up and down when her numbers started improving. We're not expecting them to come give us something or to just say thank you. It's just very rewarding. Our goal was to see this. I think all of our goals, physician, nurses, aides, respiratory therapists, was to have this moment. As of today, there are 33 COVID patients here at Holy Name. This time last year, there were three times that number. And though they have seen an uptick in cases since Thanksgiving, thanks to better treatment and the vaccinations, they see no need to reopen that COVID unit. It's manageable. We can care for all of our patients. Patients like, you know, when Bonnie, Mrs. Claus have come back to see us. Um, you know, she's an inspiration to us all and she gives us hope. So, you know, this is why we come to work every day. I'm able to give joy to children that are starved for Santa and Mrs. Claus right now because of what, what you did to help me. So I'm so thankful. Grateful for a second act. In Teaneck, Pat Battle, News 4, New York. All right, friends, well, thanks for joining us. And if you haven't seen, we do this show outside on Mondays and Fridays, so I will see you in the streets of NYC tomorrow. See you then.